All right, we're going to be replacing this two inch makeup water valve on my chilled water loop. The photo on the left is the old valve, the photo on the right is the finished product. Let's get started. All right, first thing we got to do is spin this bottom union off. Of course, we didn't get lucky enough for them to put two unions in, and the valve is way too close to the wall to, for me to spin it. So I'm going to spin the bottom union off and then cut the top nipple with a sawzall. That way I can pull the valve out. Now, when I go to replace the valve, I'm going to have to sweat a new nipple in and sweat it in place. Here's where I'm cutting the top nipple out. I'm apologizing in advance for all the voiceover, but the boiler room is just way too loud to, to talk and do the work at the same time. You wouldn't be able to hear me over the machinery. And there you have it, the old makeup water valve cut out. All right, whenever you're trying to spin one of these nipples freeze, you always have to use a hold back wrench. That's the top wrench you see. They'll always be facing opposite of each other too if you got them on there right. Now I know I make this look easy, but trust me, it was hard getting that nipple out of there. If you always, if you have trouble with a, with a nipple, you can always go to a bigger pipe wrench. Go up to a 48 inch pipe wrench if you have to, but you'll eventually get it. This piece of plastic you see is an insert from the old makeup water valve. It just keeps the O-ring straight. It's nothing to worry about. All right, we have everything we're going to need to reinstall our makeup water for our chilled uh, water loop. Now, a lot of guys will just throw this guy back in, sweat this in, and then sit there and adjust the pressures that you need by the loop itself. The problem with that is, is I know that this is preset at 50 PSI, and my loop is running a minimum of 35, so I only want it to be set at 35. Well, in order to sit there and adjust this, there's no dials, so you just gotta do a counterclockwise turn ever so many turns for every so many PSI. Well, if you ever had to do that, every time you turn this guy on, it's gonna overfill, you gotta drain the makeup water, you're gonna lose chemical, you're gonna lose, go through a lot of time because you're filling the entire system up to that pressure. Whereas, I'm gonna make a little rig here with a valve and a uh, gauge separate and put it right here so that I can leave this uh, sectioned off, closed off from the loop, adjust the pressure, dump it by unscrewing the valve, dump the water out, the pressure out, re-screw the valve in, set it to where I can have it at 35 to 40 where I need it, not 50, and then uh, it saves me a lot of time and a lot of trouble and a lot of money in chemical for my chilled water loop. So uh, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is uh, clean all these fittings up. I'm going to drill a hole in the side of this pipe um, and uh, sweat this little rig in there so that my valve will, valve will be set up in there nice and neat. So let's get started. Got my emery cloth here, or scratch cloth, some you know older pipe fitters call it. We're going to clean up all these fittings nice and clean before we try anything. Size it out, set it up, sweat it in, and take care of it. I'm not going to bore you guys with me sitting here cleaning fittings for the next 20 minutes, so I'll skip this part. All right, just in case you don't know, some guys use pipe dope, some guys use Teflon tape. I actually use both. I put Teflon tape on first and then I pipe dope it just to make a you know screw into the pipe by putting it in a little easier. If you're right-handed you want to keep the piece the threaded end in your left hand facing your right hand. Then you take the tape, put it on and you always go overhand. And you just go around the pipe. I do depending on the size of the pipe usually twice or three times always going around an extra time at the back towards the knuckle that way as you screw in it'll seal and get tighter at the end and then I put a little pipe dope on it this way when you're screwing the pipe in your Teflon doesn't unravel on you 
it was always going in the right direction. And that's it. All right, I'm going to set this end in the pipe, or in the valve, you know, crank it down all the way as tight as I can get it. That way, when I drill my, my tap, I know exactly where the pipe's going to come out where I'm going to stick my valve and gauge. This way, I won't, you know, screw it up when I put it in. It's already basically going to be installed at that point, and I know the tap will be in the exact position that I need it in. Don't mind the grunty faces. I'm getting old, and uh, it's getting a lot harder to, start to crank these two-inch pieces of pipe in, especially using a giant pair of channel locks. I should have used my pipe wrench, but I was too lazy to walk over and get it. Alright, so I know this is how my valve is going to be sitting inside when it's installed. So I want the tap to be like this so that the gauge is facing us and I can turn the valve off and on. So I'm going to drill my hole right here. I mean, I could do it like this. Yeah, maybe I will. It looks a little cleaner, don't it? Yeah, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to do it like that. That way it's right out in the open. Okay, I'm going to put a divot here so that my uh, drill bit doesn't spin around on the round pipe. Makes it a lot easier. See? No spinning, drills right in. There we have it. Now I'm just going to sweat around this joint here, fill it in as much as I can. I really don't care how bad it looks as long as it seals good. And then install the adapter on the other side. Hopefully put this in, slide it in like that, uh, sweat that last joint, and then we're good. And here's the moment I realized that the gauge was going to hit that upper handle on the valve. So I had to snap it off and then I'm just uh, cut the 90 off the end of that half inch piece of pipe and well and sweat a straight piece on. That's what you see me doing here.
All right, that rag you see is actually a wet rag, and that's to keep the half-inch joint cool while I try to sweat the two-inch joint. The, the amount of heat that it would take to, to get the uh, solder to melt in the two-inch joint would have definitely melted the uh, half-inch joint. So that way I didn't, you know, screw up the soldering joint on the half-inch while I was doing the two-inch. That's it, all sweated and put in now. Um, not the prettiest joint, but it won't leak. Uh, probably one of the worst joints I've ever sweated. But um, like I said, it won't leak, and now we can set the pressures a lot easier than filling that entire loop. So now we're gonna open this lower valve that's gonna pressurize the valve and bring the pressure up to 50 PSI, which is what the preset is on the valve. If you notice, the top valve's still shut. That's to the loop. So now we open that up, now we can just spin, close that, spin the valve or the gauge off, <clears throat> release that pressure, and I'm going to start by loosening that lock nut and then turning that adjusting nut counterclockwise four times and see where that leaves us. open our valve again after our adjustment and see what it did and it brought it to 48 psi so for four turns we're, we're dropping about two psi so we'll do this whole thing over again and see what we did All right, after adjusting it four or five times, we got it up to 38 PSI, which is exactly where we want it. Now we're gonna tighten down on that lock nut so we don't whack it out of adjustment, and then we'll open it up to the loop. Now keep in mind, every time we would've did one of them adjustments before, we would've been filling a huge amount of water into the loop and draining it each time. That would've taken most of the day instead of 15 or 20 minutes like it took me to do it this way. So after we open that valve, now it's opening up to the loop. It'll pressurize the loop to probably about 38 PSI, roughly. It'll take some time because it's gonna, it's a two inch line filling a big loop. But once it does, it should be set real nice and we'll check out our, what our pump suction and discharge is on our chilled water loop. All right, we're running about a 40 suction. 42 discharge. We have VFT pumps, so they're not really, we have no load, so they're not really ramped up right now. This is our finished product. It's keeping about 35 psi in the system. It's just a system minimum. Uh, everything's good. We're all good. Job's done. Like and subscribe!